As Modi government 3.0 begins its job, some of the core senior ministers remain the same, signaling continuity in policy under the NDA, despite BJP not being the majority party anymore, even as Hardeep Singh Puri, resuming charge of the Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas, he did just that, assert policy continuity. And it's here where it gets interesting because the earlier NDA government has not shied away from signalling attempts to bring fuel under GST. And when asked this question this time, this is what the minister had to say. Petroleum products under GST, this statement is a statement. What is the consensus? I will tell you one thing. I like your words. I like your words. I like your words. I like your words. कोशिश होगी आंसर इसको कैटेगोरिकली कोशिश होगी नो ना आई होल्ड ऑन आई एम गिविंग यू माय फिलोसॉफिकल अप्रोच आई मीन एज अ लाइन मिनिस्टर ये तो कोशिश होगी मींस यू ट्राई ऐसे यस वी विल ट्राई बोथ मिन एमओएस एंड आई विल बोथ वर्क ऑन इट It's truly not going to be easy. While yes, the benefits, if there is a GST on fuel, may seem to benefit consumers, it also isn't as straightforward. Price rationalization, of course, is likely to be a blessing to ordinary people. But the massive loss in revenue, as claimed by states, particularly opposition rule states, may prove a double whammy. But before I go into the center state explanation, or rather tussle, look at this. Excise duty on fuel makes up about 18.4% of the center's gross tax revenues. Petroleum and alcohol are huge sources of income for the states. In fact, look at this, 2023-24, just looking at the revenue from fuel for center and state, central government got 57.6% of taxes collected from the fuel and the state got a share of 42.4% of taxes collected from fuel. But are we reading too much into a 30-second interaction on fuel GST by Hardeep Puri particularly because he was asked that question on petroleum products being brought under GST. For that, it's important to understand the political contours and what the centre believes in. Let's look at some of the statements made by top ministers. Nirmala Sitaraman in February 2023 had said, once states agree, petroleum products will also be covered by GST. Centre is ready to bring petrol, diesel under GST, but unlikely that states will agree, is what Hardeep Singh Puri had said in November 2022. Petrol prices are not coming down because states don't want to bring it under GST and the GST council felt it was not the right time to include petroleum products in the GST bracket. This is what Nirmala Sitaraman had said in September 2021. And I'm being joined by T.S. Singh Dio, former Chhattisgarh Deputy Chief Minister and also the former GST Council member. Thank you very much for joining us, sir. Well, my first question to you really has to be that, you know, there seems to be a continuity in policy expected with the Modi government 3.0 and particularly what, with what Hardeep Puri said in his press address today, Interaction, he said, we will try when asked about including um, petroleum products into the bracket of GST or fuel prices under the bracket of GST. Do you see this go forward as something that's possible? It will be very tough on the states. Uh, when the GST Act was passed by Parliament, uh, there was a provision that uh, after five years, uh, petroleum products would be taken under the GST regime. But the experience in the last uh, five to six years after the GST regime was uh, introduced was that the state revenues have not gone up commensurate with what may have been thought of uh, at the time the GST regime was being put into place. So many states and particularly the manufacturing states, the consuming states uh, are having a comparatively much better time. But the manufacturing states are at a big loss and they will not hmm. be able to sustain. Okay, but 
But wouldn't this be in any sense a great relief for consumers? Wouldn't this actually bring a great relief to the Am Janta? There is a sort of cheating in this too where the people are not made aware of what is the tax structure. Bringing down the tax rate, how compared to the revenue being shared today by the center in the states? If you want to reduce the uh, burden on the consumer, that's absolutely fine. But where is the burden coming from? What is the amount of revenue that is coming to the uh, states from uh, excise duty? Uh, I, I was very surprised and shocked myself. Uh, when I read the, just got this figure for uh, this interview, on basic excise duty, 1.4 rupees per liter is the excise duty. Of this, the government, state governments get 58 paisa. On diesel, it is 75 paisa which is going to the state governments. And what is the total revenue that is going from petroleum products to the government of India? On petrol, it is 32.9 paisa. How much is going to the states? 58 paisa of 32 rupees 90 paisa. And in diesel, the total revenue is, let us say, 42.33% uh, 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 rupees per liter. How much? 42.33. What is going hmm. to the states? 75 paisa of 42.33 paisa. So when you talk about reducing the burden on the consumer on a supposedly floating rate of taxation as per international prices, who is to reduce the rates? The government of India is taking a massive chunk of revenue from these sources. Massive chunk of revenue from these sources. And the state governments are getting a, literally a pittance, literally a pittance from what the central government is collecting. No. So as it seems, between the center and the states, people are not going to get any respite. Now, when you are talking about governments and imposition of taxes and the sharing of revenues from these taxes, it has to be equitable. Hmm. It has to be equitable. If you are keeping the consumer in mind, then whatever revenue is being collected, it must be ensured that if the logic is to reduce the prices to benefit the consumer, if, if it really benefits the consumer, then the revenue of the states, for one, should not go down. They will crash. State governments will crash. For example, the state I come from, Chhattisgarh, Roughly one third of the collection, six and a half uh, to seven thousand crore, six to seven thousand crore revenue loss will be there just in one year. Just in one year. How is the state government going to create jobs, look after increasing salaried uh, uh, budgeted requirements, and looking for infrastructure development? Okay, so should this, you know, this discourse that has happened, what Hardi Puri spoke, what the minister spoke, should this be seen in line of what the ruling party has often mooted as possibly one nation, one tax? One nation, one tax is another issue. You have one, one tax in the nation, but you don't have revenue sources which are taken away from Federal bodies, how will they exist if they don't have revenue? And it is going to whom? It is going to the center. So the center is taking from CES, the center is taking from CGST, and who's the loser? The state government. Don't mash this all up in the name of help to the consumer. See, what is the picture? Where is the cheating? The cheating is you want to create pressure at a national level, that if we get into a GST regime, the prices will come down. The consumer will be happy. What about that same consumer when he is to be serviced by the state governments in terms of uh, uh, looking after them, their development, etc.? See, it is not at all as simple or as 
uh, magnanimous and effort as it is being made out to be. It is not. This is where I am saying this is cheating. Right. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us. Uh, thank you for your time. And now it's clearly evident of just how big a challenge it is, if at all there is even a process of a GST of GST on fuel to be implemented. Thank you very much for joining us. And I'm being joined also at this point by Subhash Chandra Garg, the former Finance Secretary of India, as well as Vijay Sardana, a senior economist. Thank you very much, both of you, for joining us. Let me start with you, uh, Mr. Subhash Chandra Garg. We heard what uh, T.S. Dio has spoken. Yeah, In fact, you. it may be v at a very uh, preliminary phase right now. But we've had attempts of this. These talks have happened at the GST councils earlier as well. You've had finance ministers, Nirmala Sitaraman, go ahead and say it's too early at this stage. There is a provision to do so, though, in the GST council. But really, is this something that is practical when at a time when you have opposition rule states already crying foul? So uh, thank you uh, very much. Uh, this subject of bringing the... Um, petroleum products within the scope of the GST has been on the discussion even before the GST came into this country. So this is nothing new. Uh, they, there are two intractable problems which need to be attended. It's, by the way, desirable to bring the petroleum products into the GST net. Uh, there is no uh, in-principle policy reasons why the petroleum products, four of them, and electricity should remain outside the GST regime. Uh, the problems are, uh, we have something, uh, I think it, rain, it, it, it differs whenever the petroleum prices go up, but from 80% to about 100% of the price of what the consumer pays is in the form of the taxes which the central government and the state government collects. Whereas the maximum GST so, rate is 28%. So if you bring GST, uh, petroleum products into GST net, keeping 28% as the tax rate, both the center and the state uh, suffer a massive hit. That massive hit of about two to three hmm. lakh crores uh, to go for both of them every year is simply unsustainable for them. How do you take care of that is the real problem. The second um, uh, element is that uh, the center collects the petroleum taxes mostly in the form of um, what we call the SES and surcharges, this road and infrastructure SES. 90% okay. of the excise duty uh, is collected on petroleum products in this form, which is not shared with the states. So if the uh, GST rates are reduced on petroleum products by, by sort of eliminating this road and infrastructure says, the center suffers much more. So the there are ways, but they're not easy ways. One way is to mm. sort of Adopt a okay. To you, you allow me, allow the... me uh, to just go across to Vijay Sardana, sir. I'll just get back to you, Subhash, Subhash Chandra Bose. You've laid the foundation, you've made two strong arguments. Let me just go across to uh, Vijay Sardana at this point. Vijay Sardana, if I can just ask you, there is a notion that if you bring in fuel under GST, it's going to benefit consumers. Is this inherently correct? Is it a correct assumption? First of all, good evening to you all and uh, to my fellow panelists and the viewers. See, what we are looking today is that there are about 50% taxes on the petroleum product if you look into petrol and diesel. If I put into the quantity or quantum point of view, it is something around 7 lakh crores, which government of India plus state governments collect from the petroleum products. If you reduce this uh, total tax collection by introducing GST, which is going to be, if I say, on the higher side, which is 28%, it means you are anticipating that somewhere 
there will be a decline of almost 2 lakh crore rupees revenue for the state plus center. Definitely, even if I give you a number today, see, average price, dealer price is about 57 rupees average. I'm just doing some calculations. Around 57 rupees per liter. Whereas the excise on that is almost around 20 rupees and VAT is another 16 rupees around. And then there is a dealer's commission and other overheads. So point here comes up in a very simple manner that yes, if you reduce anything from 50% tax to 28% slab, definitely it is bound to reduce the taxes or the cost of fuel in the country, which will bring relief to the common man when you go to the pump and pay 100 rupees plus on petroleum, definitely it will come down to something around 70, 80 in between. But point here comes up is then which are the sectors where government of India either introduce new taxes to compensate this loss, will it hurt consumers? Mm. That is one way have to look at it. Or they will introduce a new form of a tax which they call it super rich tax or etc. to bring the some form of a revenue back into the system. Otherwise, if you look into the government of India budget, 90% okay. of budget is already coveted. Only 8 to 10 percent budget, which is flexible, mm. which is you can say something around 4 lakh crore. Out of that, if you sacrifice 2 lakh crore by the, giving away the taxes, it will be tough for both sides. But definitely, consumers will benefit. Okay. But okay. will they have to sacrifice or pay taxes in something else? One has to see that. Okay. Okay, Subhash Chandra Garg, back to you. Now, let me ask you this question. Uh, Vijay Sardana says, listen, consumers are going to benefit. There's no doubt about it. But that is go that's only one way of seeing it. There's the other side to it. Where is the loss going to be? Let me just twist this question around and ask you. So if the prices of the fuel are rationalized, if the consumers benefit out of it, where is the loss likely to be? Because somewhere... Somebody is going to be in the loss of revenues. And that's eventually going to hurt most likely the consumers again. So this whole argument of it benefiting consumers, one is, of course, to see it in the light of massive fluctuations that have happened over the period of time. But is it an isolation to see it really in that sense? You have to see it largely in a holistic way. Of course, you have to see it in a very uh, large and holistic way. Uh, they, there are quite a few other important elements also. 86% of the petroleum products we consume in the country are imported. Uh, if the reduction in prices for consumers uh, are going to increase the um, uh, competitiveness of the petroleum products from the other energy sources, it will put pressure on the import bill as well. Uh, petroleum products consumption is environmentally not very, uh, very wholesome. That's another pressure point. So you have to look at very large, um, uh, yeah. it, it in a very large policy complex. I think if you uh, can ensure that the effective tax burden does not get reduced immediately. It may reduce over a period of time. The consumers may not really be uh, adversely affected because they are quite, they've got quite used to it. But the benefit to the industry, to the value addition in the country will increase if the GST, uh, if the petroleum products come within the GST regime, and it becomes moderate, uh, input taxes are allowed. So that will make the economy more efficient. I think that's the way to go about. As I was saying okay. earlier, you will have to design a system where the GST is at the maximum rate and rest of the tax collected today is in the form of some, some says or excise duty or, or otherwise. That is the way we can, okay. over a period of three to five years, bring about the rationalization in the GST system okay. and the petroleum. Okay. Now, 
I, I know Subhash Chandra Garg as well as Vijay Sardana. You both may not be the absolutely uh, absolute experts on what I'm going to ask you next, but economics without politics doesn't exist in a democratic country. So both of you have the same question. Vijay Sardana, I could go to you first. Modi government 3.0 is not like it was earlier. BJP does not have the majority uh, numbers and even though it's an NDA government led by the BJP, you have some strong players, strong state players who are also being known as kingmakers. Now, when you look at this context, you obviously would see the first resistance most likely from within the BJP NDA fold itself, from the government itself. So practically speaking, is this even a possibility? in India. We, like, it's interesting why what Hardeep Puri said. He said, we will try. My MOS and I will try. Is that, he said it was his philosophical answer, but is that a prudent, practical politician speaking? Vijay Sardana. The political economy of uh, petroleum products is always interesting and always controversial because stakes are very high from all sides, those who want to compromise, those who want to sacrifice, or those who want to gain from it. So definitely this bound to be politics on it. But what is important after this election, you are looking from a political angle to it. See, one of the biggest criticism of the Modi government was that inflation. Now, how to give it impact? If you look into Modi's style of functioning, it is always a major impact so that people remember. Now, here issue is that if you bring it to GST and cut down by 20% on taxes, people will remember that Modi did something great. That is a positive message among the electorates. Second, my way of looking at it is that this will bring some relief to people because otherwise food inflation is also very high. That will also cool down. This will also, you know, I will say that uh, bring some comfort to farmers some comfort to industry, especially MSME. So people will definitely give a thumbs up to Modi government for this action. Outcome will be, you are going for some important election in the states, there will be positive impact. My way of looking at it is that if this is transforming into investments, into capacity utilization of the industry, if surplus income is there in the hands of consumers by reducing 20% of taxes, if that adds to GST of the government, overall, if environment becomes positive, it will have a positive political economic impact on the overall system. And this is what Modi government wants to do okay. right now. Because by this, you may say that we are trying Subhash to Chandra control Gart, would you agree? No, not at Pardon? all. Uh, this Subhash is not Chandra Gart, would you agree? Decision. No, I, I don't agree at all. Uh, this is not an administrative decision which uh, the Prime Minister can take. This will require a constitutional amendment. This will require GST Council to agree. This will require a whole lot of um, arrangements. So I don't think politically also this is uh, possible. There are three constituents. All the, all the three constituents will oppose. Even within the central government, uh, in BJP uh, and the NDA, including the Ministry of Finance, will oppose it thoroughly. Uh, the states which are ruled by the BJP will also not be able to suffer this loss in case the GST rate is kept at 28%. And the opposition, of course, will oppose it tooth and nail. So I don't think this is going to happen. This is uh, some sort of, as you noted, philosophical type answer. It should be brought in because it's desirable, but uh, you can try for it, but it's unlikely to happen anytime soon. But my point here is, sir, Vijay Sardana, you had your point, hands your up. point is valid, but my point here is that, are you saying when government of India wants to bring it to GST, opposition will oppose it? What will be the political implication of that? Then Modi government will say, see, we want to bring the prices down. Opposition is coming. It is a roadblock. So I think it will be difficult for opposition to oppose this move. You are entitled to your opinion, but on these issues which... <laughs> okay, which okay, okay. That's of course, I don't think even anybody can casually propose that we will bring it down and do a political stress <laughs> test. I don't think that's possible. Okay, Subhash Chandra Garik, now, you know, there's one common um, 
a notion that gets propelled often when it's between the governments, between the centre and state, and that is Am Janta Fuzz Gai. You know, the political debates will go on, the political back and forth will go on, but the ordinary people are going to struggle. Is that how this is going to eventually pan out? And I'm saying with the kind of fluctuations the prices of the fuel have seen in India over the last few years. We've seen peaks and we've seen drops, but it, it, it's eaten into quite a bit. It did become also a political issue at one point. So you want my comment? Obviously. Yes, yes, Subhash yeah. Chandra Garg, it's for you. This question is for you. Because you've right. also been a former finance secretary. See, yeah, Garg, so I, please. I don't think uh, there is a very serious public resentment against this regime which exists today. They, Of course, people complain, people feel bad about it. But it has been internalized, it has been accepted, it has worked. What has not worked, what was a problematic was the wide fluctuations which uh, happen because of geopolitical events like Ukraine war, etc. That the government politically handled by not allowing the oil companies to raise the prices. For many months, we did not have uh, any increase. In, in fact, for the last many months, not taking place. It's more of an administered price. And the adjustment about the oil company's profit is taking place when the prices go down. So I don't think there is any great political desire, uh, issue also, which the people are fe feeling far more or suffering. They suffer more about the uh, tomato prices or the onion prices than the petroleum products prices. I don't think this is that severe, severe an issue. Vijay Sardana, would you agree with Subhash Chandra Garg on that issue, <laughs> on that point? Uh, See, there's a lot that's been spoken about fuel prices in India. See, you have to appreciate that uh, fuel prices has a cascading effect. If you see that, okay, people, those who have a car, they may feel relieved if there's a reduction in prices. But look from a farmer's point of view. Today, any inflation in the market, whether it's a food inflation or any inflation, the trade and commerce industry very clearly says, because fuel prices are up, that's why rates are up. And even if the prices goes down, nobody reduces MRP. So we have to appreciate including this milk. aspect. Vijay Sardana, government... including milk brands that have raised the price of milk over the last two weeks have also mentioned that as a reason. Milk brands. That's what I'm saying. So there is a cascading effect. Everybody looks for a standard excuse that fuel prices have gone up, so what we can do. And as a consumer, you and me have a no argument against such people. Those who are jacking up the prices, maybe their input cost as a fuel, maybe a few fraction of pennies. But that is what the argument is, which is sellable to the consumers. And consumer knows that because of fuel, the inflation is going up. So there is a political implication of this, which if government of India takes a decision to bring into GST, it will be important by reducing prices. Plus, the industry will be able to take the input credit back into the balance sheet. That will also have a positive implication. But again, the only villain in the game is going to be the loss of revenue to the state governments. How government of India is planning to fill this gap of loss of revenue, that will be important for us to look at it and understand that. Sneha, I just want to add uh, right. that for Subhash, last one year... Sure, please. No Subhash Chandragarh, please. Yeah, so what I was saying for last one year, there is no increase or change in the uh, uh, fuel prices. Uh, on the other hand, the, uh, the, the LPG gas price has been reduced. So where is this element of fuel price increase impacting the milk price increase? I think this is bogey. Sir, this is precisely what the argument is given by... That's exactly, in fact, Vijay Sardana was mentioning just that that one of the arguments that people would often give is just this, and I think we lost his line, but one of the arguments that people would often put up is that, look, prices are going all over and it's fuel prices that are to blame. But as you mentioned, over the last one year, that is not something that has been uh, on your screen. But Vijay Sardana joins us. Vijay Sardana, I think you were making the point. 
See, I'm saying that what sir you are saying is factually correct. But fact of the matter is when I'm increasing the price, how I'm selling to the consumers or retailers in the market by using a standard excuse that fuel prices have gone up, because of that labor has gone up, transport cost has gone up, everything has gone up, and I don't have a control on fuel prices. So it has become a standard excuse, and ultimately right. the bashing goes to the government and the profiteers enjoy the profit. So this is a very interesting me mechanism in okay. marketplace to justify your inefficiencies and extraction of prices. Yeah, people okay. have... Uh, Chandra uh, Gad uh, as well as Vijay Sardana, both of you. <laughs> okay, we, we're totally out of time, but thank you very much for joining thank us, you. both of you. It's been, it's been a very interesting conversation. We don't know where this is heading to, which direction is it heading to, but one of the things that we really wanted to understand, and I believe we've been able to drive that to our viewers, that it's not going to be an easy decision to even pursue in the Modi government 3.A, vis-a-vis right. the politics as well as the economics. Well, between all of this are the ordinary citizens. Thank you very much, Subhash Chandragarg, as well as Vijay Sardana.